I grew up in a, it was a traditional atmosphere. There was just a show I used to go to. I wasn't, my mother wasn't religious. My father passed away when I was five years old. And when I finished high school, not knowing anything else, I automatically, I mean, my mother expected that I was going to go to a university. So at that time, the first place I went was Drexel. And that was in Philadelphia. I remember sitting there trying to learn, and I couldn't concentrate. High school wasn't that big of a problem, but going through here was getting very serious, and it just didn't interest me at all. So after two months, I decided that's it. I, I'm not going to, this, no, this is not for me. So I left. I kept trying to find a place for myself. So I got a job at University of Maryland in a solid mechanics lab. And I remember trying different things. I was, I was in the Jewish organization, then B'nai B'rith, and I, I went to, I, this is all going on. I tried to uh, get involved with um, music a little bit, to play piano. But that all came to nothing. Then the next year, I decided, you know what, that's it. Let me go back to university, University of Maryland, as we mentioned before. And I said, I'm gonna make it. This time I'm gonna do it. If I had nothing else then, what am I going to do? So the first semester it was, I did very well actually. But then after that, again, my interest went down. I just didn't feel like, and I remember sitting there looking at the book, and you know, whatever the book was, I was, it was engineering, I was taking engineering. And it just didn't seem, again, it didn't seem for me. So I used to sit there and wonder what's going to be. So one Friday night, I decided to uh, walk over to the Hill House. It must have been a model who took me over there. And I just went, went to the Hill House. Because I figured I, had to, I couldn't be alone. And I walked over, and there I met sitting there, schmoozing with two graduate students. One was Dolcinski, and one was a student, Larry Levin. And I sat down, we're schmoozing. So I told them I, I was feeling very empty. And I needed something for myself to, you know, feel satisfied. And I think Larry looked at Joe and said, you know what, Lubavitch. Oh, Lubavitch. I said, what's that? <laughs> what's Lubavitch? They arranged and they said, you know what? They said, we'll take you up for Shavuos. This was Shavuos Chavdalit. So we came up. I remember he pulled over right in front of 770. And my first reaction when we got out of the car, I was looking, what's going on here? The uh, Bachram and Younger Light running back and forth with their hats and jackets on, running around, back getting ready for Yontif. I'm trying to figure, where am I, you know? Honestly, in my first, my first <clears throat> encounter, I, I mean, at first I wasn't religious yet, I felt like we just got to Tyra. I felt like this was like Martin Tyra. <laughs> That's how I felt right away. I remember actually when, we first, when the Rebbe first came in, how there was Kriya Siamsuf over there, and we went by, I'm just looking, I couldn't figure out what was happening, I didn't know. And then by the Fabrang and after Yantif, so I was standing in the back and I just stood there, I don't know anything. Mr. Gil, Mr. Gil says, he gave me a cup, and said, say the time to the Rebbe. Like something, I remember being very attached to that. Some, something was there which, which hit me very strong. But I didn't know how to relate to it. You know, I mean, what's this got to do with me? I don't know if I should tell you this, but I, I, I sitting when I remember during the, those couple of days I was here, going, sitting when the, when the walk, you know, the parkway there, so the bench was in the parkway, and uh, so I had to cry because I couldn't relate to it, but it, somehow this, it was an emotional experience. In the summer, I learned in, by, by Rabbi Levsker, before they had Adar Taira, this is before Adar Taira, they had for the newcomers, Shi'urim, and that was it. That was it. Once I was there for the summer, it was, it was, that was the, that was the, that was the uh, that I was already in. 
I decided, but meanwhile, I had to go back to school. I didn't quit school. So I think, oh, so I, I went back to school already as Shema Shabbos. And finally, the same thing happened another time that I just couldn't stay. I, I saw, I'd opened the books, trying to study. I couldn't do it. I had to go back. So there, there was no question anymore. But I wrote to the Rebbe. I wrote to the Rebbe then that <clears throat> I wanted to go and just leave university college once and for all. It wasn't for me, and I wasn't interested, <clears throat> and what I should do. And I didn't get an answered right away, obviously, but there was an answer waiting for me in 770, because I decided on my own I have to go. When I came in 770, and I was there to stay, I went to the office to see what, what you know, if there was anything from the Rebbe that I wrote in, and I, and I got the answer. I received a letter post dated October 12th. As requested, I will remember you in prayer for the fulfillment of your heart's desires for good. The attainment of good is unfortunately not always very easy. And usually, the more the thing is desirable, the more difficult it is to obtain. Therefore, when one finds extraordinary difficulties or obstacles, this in itself is often a sign that the thing desired is very worthwhile. And of course, I was to Fabrengas and everything, and, and I just I became very attached. Obviously, I was already felt very much part of 770, and I was like 710 was my home now. That was my home. I asked the Rebbe what I should do. How do I know what I should do? And as far as after I finished learning, he said I should go to the, I should take a test. What my Natiyas are, what I could do, and after two tests. So I went and I did that. The, the result is I, I would like to help people. <laughs> I mean, help people, everyone wants to help people. I went into Yechidus and I gave the self with the Rebbe again. You know, looking down. Was, uh, he looked at it very intense. He looked at, the, at my note where I told him the results of the test. And after the Rebbe finished reading it, he I didn't look at me at that time yet. He was still looking at the settle. He says, if you, if you want, if you like to help others, you could consider, you should think about teaching, teaching, becoming a teacher. And how can you help someone by teaching? You could teach them, give them, learn with them, Avis Hashem. He said, Yiris Hashem. I remember him saying, Amuna. Then he said, English, confidence. That sticks out. He said that in English, confidence. He said, confidence. And he may have said another couple in Yanam of. Uh, I don't remember, but he said those for sure. And uh, then he paused, and I thought he was finished. Then he looked up at me, and he gave me a very strong look right at me, and, and like, like talking to me personally. He said, And that was it. And I Back there, I, I left. I, I left, went, left the Yechidus. So that was Yechidus. So as I felt the Yechidus was, that in teaching, it's not the material so much, or the, even the skills, which are important, obviously. I remember even at a Fabrenga once, him saying that in the Kindle learned, you know, in Shiva, the Iker wasn't how many pages of Gemara they learned, it was in the, the Pintal Yid inside. It was the pintle of yid that they, to reach that pintle of yid, that was the ego. Und der Rebbe lernt mit dem Kind, komm es aber vor. Und in der Luft, dass er nicht 
Один во сеглад ба крой баума, да се не скабу гиворно, не спаши гиворно, ба не шею в неси со, бе де весени че лифни се, и да алли и мерхозим фунтера, в яда си ги решома и мерла я. А ме флекта зе и паркин, фа вигн, а идиш кин, мит коми са ле фо, от да нох не си да рейна ме вайл гивен, а коми са ле фо. И цида ме ламе двезда функцини, а бе нейна ментна сун до свет ангифлан син дем кин, бе терем е да крею хсейн, а коми са ле фо, до се дер алли фу на нейхи. Вас ерес кейла дем гансен дибо рише, во дибо рише не кейла у кола сереса дибрис, во зеиза не кейла у кол терише биксар, во слекере миде де леле мизе бе райса, во да се кейла у кола терише балпе, штейта смилеха тхиле ин дем алле фона нехи. Ми си бе шаад бе стоаден ин ди ир, вен де ребе е вис... He spoke about Siva Hashem and gatherings. They made, at the request of the Rebbe, they made a, a, a Masiba, a, a, a gathering upstairs, a rally, upstairs in the Zal. And it was, a, it was packed, the place was packed. But then later, Rabbi Kass said, maybe we should, we should continue this. Have Masiba Shabbos every week. And I spoke to Rabbi Groner and others, because if we did it, it would come out during the Rebbe's for Brangans. So I wrote to the Rebbe, so we, uh, I got from the encouragement, and we started doing the Masiba Shabbos. For every week, I would write into the Rebbe every week, a duch. How many kids, what we spoke about, Trump Sukkim. The Rebbe always gave me an answer. I used to go into the office, Rebbe Klein used to give me a little piece of paper, where he says, Chu uh, Eschein, and then he would mention a few words, connecting it to this man. Rabbi Katzen's life exemplifies what it means to be a devoted chassid of the Rebbe. Our Rebbeim have explained that a chassid is a lamplighter. Once the spark of his neshama has been kindled, he goes out and kindles that spark in others, bringing out their fullest potential. For over 40 years, until his final day in this world, Rabbi Katzen was a lamplighter to his teaching his rallies, Mesibis Shabbos, Hasidish and Nigunim, and was loved by his thousands of yeshiva students and even college students and visitors who went through the open doors of his and his wife Rivka's home for a Shabbos and Yom Tov. Rabbi Katzen humbly devoted his entire life to his shlichus as a malamid and educator with care and devotion, instilling Yiddish Shemayim and a love for Yiddishkeit in thousands of his students affecting generations to come. He continued the never-ending chain of kindling the spark in every neshama. We look forward to the final Geula, when we will enjoy the ultimate Meshiva Shabbos with Rabbi Katzen and all the Jewish children in the Beis HaMikdash HaShlishi. May it be now. <laughs>